Hey everyone, it's Ms. Dietrich helping you to find the prime factorization of three-digit numbers. We're going to look at number five. Uh, they give you 420, so the step one, if you're using a factor tree to do this, is to write the number down and put some branches underneath. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to put a branch. Make sure you leave plenty of room. Now we know that 10 goes into this because it ends in a zero. That's also true for numbers four and six. So let's put a 10 down, and let's think 10 times what? Now that should be a no-brainer. What's in front of the zero? A 42, so that's the other factor. All right, now both of these are composite. We have to keep branching until we have all prime numbers. That's why they call it prime factorization. Remember, factors are the numbers that can be multiplied to give you the number. That's composite. Let's keep branching. We can use a 2 and a 5 to get 10. And for 42, we can do a 6 and a 7 to get that. Now the answer to the question, when are you done with your prime factorization or when are you done with your factor trees? It's when you have all prime factors. This is prime, this is prime, and this is prime. However, this is composite. We need to keep branching on any composite number. Let's bring the other numbers down so we don't forget about them. We have a 2 and we have a 5. And then let's think of the numbers that we could multiply to get 6 other than 1 times 6. And you should have come to mind. 2 times 3. And then we'll bring the 7 down. All right, now let's look at this row here that we have and make sure that they're all prime. That's prime, that's prime, that's prime, that's prime, and that's prime. So we're all set. So the only thing left you have to do, teachers usually like you to organize them from least to greatest. So we have a couple of 2s. We have a 3. We have one five and we have a seven. So do put them in order from least to greatest. Now I want to show you another technique that works for people who are not neat and tidy with their trees. And it's called a division ladder. In your textbook, they usually write it in the opposite direction. But I like to have it fit in the same direction that you're used to with the long division. So I'm just going to show you that technique. The downside to it is that you're less likely to have mental math computations compared to using the factor tree. So let's take a look at the division ladder, I like to call it. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your number that you're trying to find the prime factorization of, and you're going to, outside the division box, you're going to choose the lowest prime number that will go into the number. In this case, that would be 2. And if we divide that out, you're going to get 210 for a quotient. Then you're going to make another division box. And you're going to say to yourself, what's the lowest prime number that goes into 210? And again, it would be 2. So then you have to ask yourself, see, here's where you can get into trouble. Because you may not recognize how many times 2 goes into 210. And it may be necessary for you to kind of off to the side actually do the long division just to see. But oftentimes this isn't necessary because sometimes people can kind of figure out that uh, it would be 105 without having to go through this business here. All right, so the lowest number that goes into 105, we're going to do a little division box, is going to be 3. 3 is going to go into that. Now again, if you don't know, if you're not good at mental math, see how it might create the need for doing a computation. You might actually have to find 105 divided by 3 because you won't know what the quotient is. And you'd have to go through this business that goes in three times, get the one left over, and then recognize that three goes into that five times. So I think you get the idea that the number there would be 35. All right, so then you say to yourself, what's the lowest number that goes into 35, or the lowest prime number? It would be five, and then you would get seven. So do you see how at the end we have a composite, or I'm sorry, a prime number? So that's how you know you're all set with your prime factorization. Now the reason that some people like this is because, look, you have your prime factorization neatly organized for you in order from least to greatest. So see, 2, 2, 3, 5, and 7. It's the same thing. It's just kind of built up or kind of going at a diagonal. So we call this a division ladder, and some teachers like to write it going down instead of up, but it's really just a matter of personal choice.